When I first started hearing about the coronavirus on the news, I really didn't take it that seriously. I remember when Y2K was the big thing, all the computers were going to shut down. So I didn't really take coronavirus that seriously, but now, now that I'm getting all of these reports, it seems like maybe I should. Today on Passport Kings, we're going to go over the coronavirus and how it can affect travelers in 2020. Engage. <laughs> My name is Rock Land. I'm a travel advisor. I make Passport Kings travel videos to inform, review, and excite you about vacation destinations and other travel related information. If this is a topic you like, consider subscribing to Passport Kings and ring the bell so you can be the first in the know when I upload new content. All right, so the coronavirus is wreaking havoc across the world. Um, just this week, there's been 15 more cases of the coronavirus in the US and um, somewhere in Texas. So today we're just going to do a brief overview of what it is and how it can affect you and what you can do to combat it. I'm going to use a lot of information from the World Health Organization so that way I can know that I'm giving you accurate information. All right, so now what is the coronavirus? Now, according to this document, the coronavirus are a large family of viruses that cause illness ranging from the common cold to, to more severe diseases such as Middle East Respiratory Syndrome and Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome. And it says a novel coronavirus is a new strain that has not been previously identified in humans. Coronaviruses are zoonotic, and that means that they are transferred between animals and people. Detailed investigations found that SARS-CoV was transmitted from civet cats to humans and and MERS, COV, from dromedary camels to humans. It says that several known coronaviruses are circulating in animals and have not yet affected humans. Because I know um, recently I've been looking online and a lot of people have been showing that their aerosol can said that the Lysol would kill the coronavirus so they don't know why all of a sudden it's a super deadly disease when we already have the cure for it. But, I mean, that, that takes a lot of washing your hands and just killing the um, viruses. So now that we know what it is, let's see if we can figure out how to detect it if we see it. So um, the World Health Organization is going to give us a list of the common signs. Common signs that an infected includes respiratory symptoms, fever, cough, shortness of breath, and breathing difficulties. In more severe cases, infection can cause pneumonia, severe acute respiratory syndrome, kidney failure, and even death. So if you're having some of those symptoms, I would suggest that you go see a doctor as soon as possible. Chances are it's probably like the flu because I know that at least here in Atlanta, the weather is just changing constantly. One day it's completely cold, the next day it's warm like it's as if we're in the tropics. So that could make a lot of people sick. So you wouldn't be sure if it was that or the coronavirus. So if you're feeling really down and out and terrible, at least for like a couple of days or even sooner, I'm not a doctor, so I can't tell you when you should go to see emergency help. But if you're feeling down and it feels new, I think you should go see your doctor and just let them run tests on you to make sure that you don't have the coronavirus. All right, so the next, uh, step we're going to is the recommendations to prevent infection spread. So I think I went over this a little bit already, but um, some of the recommendations is to make sure you wash your hands regularly, uh, you cover your mouth and nose when coughing and sneezing. It's, it sounds like pretty much the basic things that you should be doing as a human anyway because you don't want to get your germs all over each other. Um, it also says thoroughly cooking your meats and eggs. Uh-oh. I know sometimes I don't follow that rule. All of my steaks don't be that well done. So I got to make sure that I do that myself. And then it says avoid close contact with anyone showing symptoms of respiratory illness such as coughing and sneezing. I think that's pretty self evident but to be honest I, I while I was reading that I was thinking man I was around somebody who was coughing and sneezing recently but I've, I've, I've been in here in Atlanta for the last couple of days so um, I haven't been traveling as much as I would actually like to be traveling but with all of this going on it's probably a good thing that I've been grounded for a little while but I'll be back up in the air as soon as possible but I would hope that this coronavirus thing is taken care of and we are out of woods with this let me see if i can give you some more information about it okay this is this is a part called the myth busters and i guess this is what they're trying to tell you that uh, you may have heard these rumors going around but it not it is not necessarily true so 
uh, one of the myths is that hand dryers are effective in killing the new coronavirus. They're saying that that is a myth. I'm not sure where that came from. I never heard that uh, claim, but it, to read it word for word, it said, no hand dryers are not effective in killing the 2019 NCOV, which is, is the coronavirus. It says to protect yourself against the new coronavirus, you should frequently clean your hands with an alcohol-based hand rub or wash them with soap and water. Once your hands are clean, you should dry them thoroughly by using paper towels or a warm air dryer. The air from the air dryer is not gonna do it alone. You do definitely need to have soap and water or an alcohol-based uh, cleanser. All right, so the next rumor was that an ultraviolet disinfectant lamp can kill the new coronavirus. I wonder if people are really saying these things, but um, I guess they are because this is on, like I said, on the World Health Organization site. So it's saying that um, a new UV lamp should not be used to sterilize hands or other areas of the skin as UV radiation can cause skin irritation. So it says UV lamps should not be used to sterilize hands. So I guess um, I guess the UV lamp was able to sterilize the hands, but they're saying that you shouldn't use it because that could cause a new skin irritation. So that is not a good idea. So I guess it works, but it's just not the best way to go about making sure that you're clean from the coronavirus. All right, so next we have how effective are thermal scanners in detecting people infected with the new coronavirus. Okay, so I guess this is a question that someone asked because they wanted to know if you can detect the coronavirus by having like one of those thermal scanners where you see the um, heat signature of people. It says thermal scanners are effective in detecting people who have developed a fever, like I said, with the heat signature. So it says have a higher than normal body temperature because of infection with the new coronavirus. However, they cannot detect people who are infected but are not sick with the fever. This is because it takes two to 10 days before people who are infected become sick and develop a fever. All right, so basically it's saying the thermal scanner can detect if you have a fever, it sees that you're hot, but it cannot, it cannot specifically say that this heat is coming from the coronavirus. And they're saying that you could have the coronavirus and not have a fever yet. So this is a very ineffective way to decide if you have the coronavirus. All right, the next one says, can spraying alcohol or chlorine all over the body kill the new coronavirus? I guess that is just someone's question. I don't know where people be coming up with these questions from. I mean, I've heard that bleach itself, chlorine, can kill a lot of viruses and, and things like that. I mean, even if we read on a bleach bottle, it says that it kills 99% of all antibacteria or something like that. So it says, no, spray alcohol or chlorine all over the body will not kill viruses that have already entered your body. So I guess the, the saying is still true that the chlorine can kill the things that are on top of your skin, but it cannot kill something that has already infected your body. So unless probably you drink a whole thing of bleach, <laughs> but I don't, I don't suggest you do that. I'm sure no one would suggest you do it because not only would it kill the virus inside of you, but it would kill you from the inside out. So don't do the bleach drinking thing, but it says, be aware that both alcohol and chlorine can be used to disinfect services, but they need to be used under appropriate recommendations. So that's pretty much what I said. Now, uh, the next question is, is it safe to receive a letter or package from China? And the answer that the United World Health Organization has is yes. It is safe. People receiving packages from China are not at risk of contracting the new coronavirus. From previous an analysis, we know coronaviruses do not survive long on objects such as letters or packages. So they're saying if it's not, if the coronavirus, if the coronavirus is not sitting on a living body or an organism such as us and animals, then it has a very hard chance of surviving. So they're saying if you put it on a inside of a cardboard box and it's been sent all the way across the ocean, um, chances are that if it did have coronavirus on it, the, that coronavirus would be dead. But I am not a scientist. This is what the World Health Organization says. And I suggest that, I guess if you get a box from China then scrub that joint down with some bleach. <laughs> all right, so next is, can pets at home spread the new coronavirus? And it says, the answer to that is, at present, there is no evidence that companion animals, pets, such as dogs or cats can be infected with the new coronavirus. However, it is always a good idea to wash your hands with soap and water after contacting with pets. This protects you against various common bacteria such as E. coli and salmonella that can pass between pets and humans. So 
still the same advice pretty much is wash your hands after you do anything that has something to do with any other breathing living creature so yeah just wash your hands um let me see how many more do we have next question is do vaccines against pneumonia protect you against the new coronavirus i don't know i guess someone had uh someone had pneumonia they got a vaccine for it so now they think that they are able to fight off the coronavirus so the answer is no vaccines against pneumonia such as pneumococcal vaccine and hemophilus influenza type b do not provide protection against the new coronavirus all right next question is can regularly rinsing your nose with saline help prevent infection with the new coronavirus i guess i could just ask all of the questions here because i already told you the ways to help not spreading the coronavirus so most of these that are being asked, the answer is no. With this one, spraying, spraying a regular saline up in your nose, which is the same stuff like, uh, well, the answer is no. So that is not going to help you. And neither is mouth washing. Another one is, can eating garlic help prevent infection from the new coronavirus? Oh, wait, it says garlic is a healthy food that may have some antimicrobial properties. However, there is no evidence from the current outbreak that eating garlic has protected people from the new coronavirus. And no sesame seed oil does not kill the new coronavirus either. I mean, so they say they don't know, but uh, chances are what well, it wouldn't help to eat garlic or um, eat the sesame oil. By the way, put sesame oil in your food. That makes things really good. All right, now, does putting on sesame seed oil, all right, we already answered that one. Does the new coronavirus affect older people or are younger people also susceptible? I don't know who's asking these questions, but the answer is uh, everyone is susceptible to the coronavirus. Are antibiotics effective in preventing and treating the new coronavirus? And the answer is no, antibiotics do not work against the coronavirus or any virus. It only works against bacteria. Let me see if they have another question here. Oh, the last one. Are there any specific medicines to prevent or treat the new coronavirus? The answer is, to date there is no specific medicine to prevent or treat the new coronavirus. However, those infected with the virus should receive appropriate care as soon as possible and treat the symptoms. And those with severe illness should receive optimized supportive care. Some specific treatments are under investigation and will be tested through clinical trials. WHO is helping to accelerate research and development efforts with a range of partners. All right, so that wraps it up. That is about everything that there is to know about the coronavirus. So like I said, um, make sure you guys just wash your hands, stay clean. Um, if there's a travel advisory on certain places, I know that they're saying that China is probably the worst place to go right now. So make sure that y'all stay away from there also. But where you should go is you should come on any Tuesday in Atlanta, come check out the presentation that um, is given by me and my partners about Planet Marketing, where you can learn how to make um, a substantial amount of money in the travel industry. And you can do that either part-time or full-time and um, on your days off. And other than that, make sure that you go to PassportKings.com so you can get my free ebook just by joining my mailing list. Keep a lookout for some of these other videos that I'm putting up this week. I'm trying to make myself a schedule that is a lot more videos per week than I used to. I just want you guys to protect yourself out there, make sure that you're washed up, and make sure that the coronavirus cannot infiltrate your kingdom like a king of Passport Kings. Peace.